Good good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everywhere you are watching from. Um, here with us is Zainab Ramadanis. She will be talking about gender performance in OSM mapping. Does it really matter? She has done a research using uh, OSM chair, and I think her research is quite interesting, and um, it is talking about the behavioral differences in, in the community. So I think we can use this, what all her findings to formulate community policies for the future. So I could hand this to her. So Hello, thank you for being here today. I'm Zainab from Humanitarian Open Map Team, Indonesia. I'm here today to talk to you about gender performance in OSN mapping. Does it matter? Do you know many people assume women are bad at spatial skills, for example, to determine directions? Some of us may be a little bit confused to say which is the left side and which is the right side. When our brain is thinking this one is the left side, but unconsciously, we say this one is the right side. And because of that, some of our male friends conclude that we can't distinguish the directions. Maybe some of us are wondering, why in some communities male members dominate more than female members? And are there differences in objects mapped by male and female? Uh, so according to OSM chart statistics, which gender has better statistics, female or male members? According to some psychology research, men and women's brain are wired differently. It affects their behavior as well, and some of those differences can easy to see from men are better at Modern and special skills, fact and logic, they tend to use their logic rather than feeling. Also, they determine position from directions and distance. They can distinguish the point of compass easily than women and higher percentage of white matter. So, what about women? Women are better at verbal abilities and strong memory. Most of the other girls are able to speak faster than boys. Also, when we are arguing with women, they can easily remember the, the past. And intuition and emotions, most women are more sensitive. Determine positions from landmarks. They remember the landmarks easily than directions or point of compass. For instance, when someone asks me where's the certain place, I tend to mention a specific place like bank or market rather than directions or distance and higher percentage of gray matter to answer the problems that i've mentioned before i did online surveys with 66 participants including 35 men and 31 women 24 from 35 men members are active contributors and they spend four years and a month time virtually and creating for more 4,000 chain sets averagely. Moreover, 21 from 31 female members are active users and spend time averagely two years and nine months and creating more than 5,000 chain sets. And based on how did you contribute in OSM websites, active user means someone who has edited the project in any three calendar months from the last one year and has maintained a valid email to a request to vote within three weeks. Furthermore, from correspondent online surveys, I create statistic that I use OSM chart and how did you contribute to OpenStreetMap or HDYC. Using this website, I obtain five categories. First, object mapping, to see which object that they created most. Second, created nodes, to know average nodes, the highest and the lowest. Third, created ways, to figure which gender that created ways more. Fourth, total chain sets. Like I've said before, the temporary chain sets, also the highest and the lowest. And the last time frequency, which gender that uses OSM more often. Firstly, from women's data, we can see 84% members are mapping highway with 34,000 highway chain sets averagely that created by the woman. Next, for created nodes, the average number is more than 600,000 with the lowest notes is 150 and the highest notes almost reach 2 million notes. And next, for created ways, the average number shows almost uh, 300,000 ways with the lowest ways uh, is 17 
and the highest is 289,000. Then, for the chances, the number of average is more than 5,000, with the lowest chances is 19, and the highest chances is 18,000. And the last category is time frequency. For time frequency, it shows three kinds of times. First, almost every day, second, occasionally, and third, sometimes. The blue one is almost every day with 42%. It means 42% of women are using OSM more than four days in a week. And the red one is occasionally with the same number as almost every day, 42%. This means 42% of women are mapping few times in a year. And the last is the yellow one is sometimes with 16% women members who contribute in OSM for one or two times in a month. In fact, 40% of women members are paid members. They are currently doing a certain project, so they are using OSM almost every day. Secondly, it is men's data. As we can see from the screen, 86% of male members are mapping highway with 13,000 highway transactions averagely. Next, created notes. It shows almost 500,000 notes in a flash number, with 340 notes as the lowest number of created notes and 1.6 million as the highest number of created notes. Then, the created waste. The created waste it shows a flash number, 85,000 waste, with 11 waste as the lowest and almost 300,000 as the highest created waste. Next, the chain sets. The number of average chain sets shows more 4,000 chain sets, with 20 chain sets as the lowest and more 5,000 as the highest created chain sets by the main members. And next, for the last statistic categories, it's time frequency. There are five kinds of times which is more variation than women's. There are occasionally, sometimes, almost every day, twice in a month, and once in a week. First, the blue one is occasionally with 34%. It's the highest timing. And second is sometimes with red color with 26%. And the third is almost every day with the same number as the sometimes. And it's shown by yellow color. And the fourth is 11% of once in a week with orange color. And the last is the lowest percentage, is twice in a month with green color. In this case, 25% men participants are paid mappers. Like the woman mappers I've mentioned before, so they are mapping in OSM almost every day. However, the time frequency by men mappers are more variative, because 70% of them are unpaid mappers, which means they only do mapping in their spare time. It can be once in a week twice in a month, or etc. Next is discussion. First, male members are using OSM longer than female members. It's shown by the statistic data that average time is more four years. Also, men dominate voluntary geographic information. This is confirmed by Cabinary in 2016, who states that the neo-geographic revolution requires not only the possession of suitable technology, for instance, a smartphone, but also the capability and skills to capture location, here the resulting information, and importantly, shared in on a map. Next, the second, OSM users are dominated by men. 35 from 66 members are men. It bets on online surface. Next, third, it's a male female awards in spatial skills. In fact, statistics show women members created more nodes and ways. Also, the number of chances. And the last is more than women do smoothing in line objects like highways, waterways, and etc. Also, like the first problem on early presentations, I said male members dominate more than female members in some communities. To the contrary, in hot Indonesia, 
19 from 30 members are female. As the third point of discussion, this amid the female words are in special skill. In fact, women dominate in your graphic community with mapping as their main job, and the map that created by them is as good as men do. Next, these are few samples of how women and men do the mapping. On the first row, it's done by women, and the second row by men. As you can see, the woman's map is more detailed than men. They created more notes, particularly in curved ways. The women tend to do smoothing more than men. On the other hand, men do less smoothing, but digitization all the objects. In men's view, smoothing is not essential as long as they are digitizing the whole object with tag properly. Otherwise, in women's view, smoothing is very important after the tagging object. Some of them say it's pleasing their eyes. Next, on this slide, we can see the distinct is what men do and what women do clearly. On the left one, this mapper created fewer knots in curve ways. So in the OSM map on the below, the curve way looks in the shot. However, on the right one, this mapper created many knots in turn way, and as a result, it looks smoother in OSM map. It is easier to find the user is do smoothing or not with curve digitizing like this. If the user created many nodes on the curve, it means the user do smoothing. And based on the OSM chart visual map, female mappers doing this more than men. Fortunately, in OSM map, there are not many differences between this digitizing with smoothing and not smoothing, like you can see from this slide. Next, the conclusion. First, women are better at attention more on details. They have more processing power for details, driven by smoothing the digitation frequently than men do, even though it needs more time. Second, more aesthetic or creative disciplines. They tend to do anything neatly for pleasing themselves, like the smoothing in ways. Third, can differently uh, much color better than men because they have better visual system to between colors more finely and it is very useful in mapping and spatial skills especially cartographic the last able to do multitask they can do mapping and other jobs at the same time and for the men they have better special skills they can distinguish the direction precisely also being always a mapper longer than women. Second, more dominance in computing and technology. According to college atlas.org, engineering and math degree in top 10 most popular by male. And third, men value pay, power, and benefits. In this case, only few of them are doing smooth digitization because it necessary more times and they think it's not that efficient. The last have better focus. They better at performing on single tasks, so they don't need to divide their focus. In conclusion, when one gender makes the majority of decision about what information makes it into a map, and yet the users are not just one gender, However, a good map is when it offers very perspective and detailed information. Both men and women have the chance to mapping in OSM to make a better map that could be accessed by the public. Both can complete each other with their flaws and axes. Also, inclusive map must involve the local community regardless of their background, education, economic level, ethnicity, religion, race, and intergroup relations. And thank you all for being here today and taking the time to patiently listen to what I have to say. I wish you all have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Two, one, two. Thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. Go ahead, Trudy. I was saying that. Thank you so much. I hand over to Hiva, my co host. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have this conversation with Trudy and Zanib. Thank you so much for the research. 
um, more and more over the years. And I posted some links into the pad around research that people have done about gender diversity in OpenStreetMap. And it's really telling that um, the data set is only as good as the people who contribute, meaning that we do need to have a whole whole world map. And so I appreciated your last comments on that. So there are some questions in the pad. And so for those of you who have not asked questions in the pad yet, um, I certainly encourage you to do that. And for Zeneb, <laughs> here we go. There are a few here. Um, yeah. So the first question that is, how can you measure men and how do you know if an OSM contributor is a man or a woman? So um, how do so, you identify uh, that? Yes, okay, please go ahead. Uh, like I've said, uh, like I've mentioned before in my presentation, I'm doing. I was doing online present online surveys using Google Form. So on this mm -hmm. uh, question, I asked, uh, which is the gender and username, so I can identify which is man and which is woman. Wonderful. And as you know, when you sign up. For OpenStreetMap, your user profile does not um, have a category for gender. So you mm -hmm. had to do a workaround in order to be able to get that data. And that's yeah. important, right? Just to say that how do you how do you know about diversity without having it in our main system kind of data set around the users? Okay. Um, the next question, and there's quite a few here. So look at that. I, I was asking for questions and it, there's lots now. So uh, mm -hmm. take a deep breath, Sineeb. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what is the percentage of paid mappers in terms of contribution and what is their retention once the project is done? So were you able to discern that de that level of detail about mm -hmm. in your surveys? So apparently in my experience, uh, unpaid and paid mappers is, are not uh, much different. So for the paid mappers, uh, some of them have uh, like... Uh, Certain goals, so they have like uh, so align the align the map with the imagery, and doing the we do the mapping more like details than the uh, unpaid mappers. But on like what I've said, like I was like I have said before on my presentation, uh, the point is how the man and the woman doing the the mapping in OSM and I got uh, the woman doing smoothing more uh, frequently than the men do and I've researched about the men about the men mappers uh, that unpaid and paid mappers so and also the women there are no difference like also the paid mappers uh, the paid woman mappers doing the smoothing more than men do because uh because the woman, as uh, me, uh, feels like the, de the details and the need is quick, uh, this essential for pleasing my eyes or the, the other woman. And did you, did, were you, when you looked at the data, um, as any, did you see what percentage of the women that you met or talked about, what percentage of them were paid and volunteer? Was there a difference? Because the peep this of your sample so you have a sample based on gender and did you break it down further to percentage of volunteer and and paid oh yeah i have a few samples in okay in, oh, can I, oh in my presentation okay in my presentation like uh the like i thought the uh, the map, like uh, the first row is man, this is woman, and the second row is man, and it's quite different from uh, the the notes that created by men and the created by the men do. And I think mm -hmm. from the the woman, there are a lot of created notes rather than the men, so it's like more details, and it's also work when I see the unpaid members, the woman unpaid members. Mm -hmm. um, was there a difference between how men and women had access to te technology and training? So you notice a difference in what they map and how they map um, and in their survey, but was there something about the access to technology and, and training that was different? You said that in your conclusion as well, but maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, sorry, con technology. So the question was, for the women and men that you interviewed, was there a difference between the technology and training access? Did they have equal training and technology or was it different? 
uh, apparently in my question on the online surveys, I didn't ask about the technology. So, but according to my uh, article that I research, uh, that I read about uh, tech psychological in brand and men, be brand, brand men and woman behavior, the uh, they say the men uh, use love to use uh using technology than woman so in my ex according to my experience women uh are not so interested in technology that men do uh most of women but so that's why i said uh the men uh, are better in technology and also like uh the department that the that the mostly by men doing like engineering and math there are a lot of men but just a few of women okay and so i think somebody asked this question but it might be related and i think we might have answered it so i'm just going to clarify um so the way that you were able to identify the gender in your analysis is people self-identify their gender with you right in the survey that you do is that correct yeah. so you don't get it from their. okay perfect okay so we've answered that question um, really happy to see all these questions here, and I'll try and give Zaneev a, a minute to breathe. Um, do you think there's a danger, and this is from Gregory, thanks Gregory, do you think there's a danger that mappers, um, that some mappers avoid telling their gender or setting a name that identifies as gender because they do not want to have that conversation around men and women mapping differently? So do you think that that changes how people identify? So people identified from their usernames in that, but do you feel that um, that there's a danger in how people identify in terms of gender? Mm, I think uh, it is like, in fact, many people are, are not judging like uh, the gender, like many uh, in, in, my, in my environment, many of my male friends are judging me because I'm, I'm, I'm female and I'm doing this job as a geographer uh, and they're like mocking me like uh, I'm bad at the determine the direction. So mm -hmm. because uh, it is like a really wise if OSM doesn't need to need uh, unnecessary to put the gender on the profile. So uh, the people now need to guess which is the gender uh, or which is the book mapper that made from men or women. Yeah, I like to say that every contribution is a gift, Zaneeb, and I think that, you know, we need to recognize that. And it's hard that that kind of um, comment could potentially deter somebody from being part of OpenStreetMap or any other technology community. Okay, more questions. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Okay. Are there more differences? <laughs> Are there more differences between individual men and individual women? Um versus the averages. So did you notice the nuances in the data? So you have these two data sets between how men, how the people who self-identified as male in the, in the survey and the people who self-identified as female in the survey. Was there differences between any outliers of the data? Was it all pretty standard, cut and dry? Do you follow? Okay, uh, apparently, uh, that's on my research. Uh, there, there is like oh. some, some sample, there is uh, no show. There is no show. The difference between men, individual men, and individual women. I also yeah. found uh, a woman uh, do mapping like the men do, and also the men like uh, created notes like really detail like the women do. So it is really difficult to do, to differences to distinguish which is the individual men do and individual women do because there is no like uh uh clear clear differences between the individual, but we can see from the leverage and between the group man and the group woman. Wonderful. And you are you are going to publish your slides somewhere so that people could look at them. Are you going to make an OSM diary with your slides? Okay, I can do it. Wonderful, um, wonderful. And thank you. And Kyle, how much more time do we have? Because and Kyle's our wonderful tech person who's been with Trudy and I all morning. We do have stacks of questions here and I just want to make sure that I'm doing a time check to honor people's time. We've got another 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right. Take another deep breath, Zaneeb. Trudy, did you want to do some of these questions with me? Okay. <laughs> Over to Trudy. She has already said she's going to publish the research in OSM Diary. I want to ask 
Wonderful. Wanted to add. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I'll, so I'll, I'll, how do you compute co compute smoothness? Is is it something qualitative or some metrics? Uh, it's something like qualitative, but uh, from the OSM uh, HDYC, we cannot see the smoothing, the smoothing, uh, the smoothing map. But from the OSM charter, there is a visual map feature that we can see the differences between the men and women do. Then there is clearly there is uh, we can see the clearly from the curve, and apparently women do the created not smaller more than women on the curve. Um, uh, uh, this question is quite coming up a lot, so I'm trying to rephrase it. Like people are making it in the comment section. I think it's quite also interesting for me to know. Yeah, about uh, uh, when you are categorized. Um, did you also, uh, did you engage also with the transgender? Although you don't know, like the transgender. Or oh, did you also interact with those even who don't know yet, who have not yet decided about their gender? Okay, it's such a wonderful question. So I've read about the research, psychology research by J.S. Kranz, research in 2014. Uh, he said about white matter microstructure in transsexual, and apparently the transgender groups were at intermediate stage. Also, some experts say the hormone structure of transgender uh, and cisgender are similar. So, in my opinion, uh, the transgender woman can be grouped in woman statistic, and so do the men's transgender can be grouped in men's statistic. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so there's another one uh, saying, What suggestions do you have about increasing contribution of women in the mapping activity? So, uh, and it would be better if we make them more specific, that is, tags that. Sorry, I can hear you. Oh, someone is asking about how can we increase contribution mm -hmm. of women in mapping activities according to you? And do you think it will be better if we have whole mapathons that are women specific to their needs or we have more presets and tags that are for women? Uh, like I've said before, uh, many women are less confident about uh, their special skills like uh, they are not, uh, they they are uh, addicting. They are no can be compared by the men. Yeah, and um, I don't know whether this has been covered yet. But uh, which part of the world does your research cover? Does it cover on the whole world, or it only covers um, your country? Hello? Hello? Did we lose Have you had my question? Have you had my question? Sanib? I think... Zainab, are you there? Zainab? Looks like not. Kyle? I think we may have lost her. We may have lost her. All right. Well, um, hopefully there's been a lot of questions in, in the chat here. And I, I just want to say over the last few years, we've run a number of sessions on gender and diversity and diversity and inclusion. Um, and this research around gender performance um, and trying to do even just from one country and then do it more globally um, is really exciting. And I just want to thank Zanib for, for, for the work that she's done. I'm sorry that she can't be here to hear us. Um, we did try and cover a lot of the questions between Trudy and I. Um, and I do see that there's a lot of dialogue there in the comments just around like, how can we do more research on this? So our friends from CrowdMap in Tanzania are saying that. Um, there's some comments about the methodology, which I do encourage you to call contact Zanib about. 
it seems to me that, um, you know, OpenStreetMap as a research agenda, uh, you know, people having research methodologies and sharing those best practices is really, really important. Um, and that, that we do need to have more research in terms of that and more rigor on understanding how people map and why they map. And that's been um, a couple of themes today in terms of what, what makes it some, uh, a map project like OpenStreetMap inclusive and diverse. And so this morning we heard from one colleague talking about how do we help um, the wider LGBT, LGBTQI community in uh, in Philippines. Then we heard from uh, from Dewey talking about behavior and how people interact. And now we've heard from Zanib. And so each one of these conversations, I believe, shows a, a full arc. And I'm glad that our State of the Map friends have put together this program to kind of have this dialogue. So with that, maybe um, since Zanib is gone, I would encourage you to email her or contact her directly with questions. And she did promise that she'll put the slides on there. And, and Trudy, did you have any closing comments before I talk about the Diversity Inclusion Committee? Over to Trudy. Any comments about this session? No, I do not have. I just want a lot of people to come for our session because we are trying, like last year we met and we talked about something. So we want to have a follow up and also mm -hmm. yeah, different things that we all need your contribution. Yeah, and I just want to thank, again, all the research that people have done and shared today about diversity and inclusion within OpenStreetMap. There's a lot of questions on all the pads, and I hope that we can kind of uh, um, put them all together to be able to tell a story. But that story doesn't stop um, after State of the Map. It's an ongoing thing. So with that, um, there is a diversity and inclusion special committee. A mailing list, a, a note has been sent out to the mailing list. Um, you can also find the wiki links that we put into the into the pad for you here. Uh, there are quite a few people who want to have this conversation. And so I'm not sure if there's a self-organized session about this today. I certainly have been online since uh, 7.30 looking at this. So hopefully uh, you do get a chance to look at that. But with that, I want to thank Zaneeb. I'm sorry that she had to go and that her internet connection went. Um, and so that maybe we'll just end a little bit earlier uh, uh, with that, with that Kyle and Trudy, if that's okay. And Trudy, it's been a pleasure to co-host with you this morning. Oh, it looks like she might be back. Just to see if we can give her just an honor, just to honor her. Hi, welcome back, Zanib. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My thank you, is back. Yeah, no, we were just asking if you had any closing comments or things that you'd like people to think about. Okay. Uh, just some suggestions or comments on what, what you think people should think about in terms of this topic, because you've spent some time on this topic. Um, sorry. What suggestions do you have for people to do this kind of research? What kind of suggestions do you have for people? If somebody was to do this research in their country, what 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 can they learn from you? Maybe, but uh, I just read the session pad that maybe uh, for the father for the father research, we can uh, learn about. Uh, any gender, not just male and female, to to know more about uh, how the difference is between the other genders. Right. And so you used OS OSM Cha for this. So tell us a little bit more about how you use that. Uh, we're using we're using OSM Cha. Um, I I I I I use uh like ten samples, uh, each for the the users. And from this data, from the ten samples, I met the I mean, I met the uh their visual map and their created notes, created ways, and their object. And I met the footage in statistic data using my Excel. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you. do you have any suggestions for people on this research? How would how would how can you improve it? Uh, the suggestion for this research. Oh, uh, maybe uh. For the further research, uh, they can use the more samples and the more participants, not only just uh, the paid mappers dominant, but for the unpaid mappers that really volunteer because the open map is using by a public, not just by the paid mappers. Right. Right. So OpenStreetMap is, is complex and beautiful. Wonderful. Well, Zanib, thank you so much for your research. How can people find you? Are you on Twitter or Facebook? Could they find you there? Or you said that you're going to write a diary entry about this, just in case people want to ask you questions. How can people reach you? Oh, I think she froze again. I think she froze again. Trudy, 
it looks like she's frozen again. So with that, um, I'm Heather Leeson. It's been a pleasure to uh, to to talk with Zanib today and with Trudy. Um, you can find us all online and looking forward to having more conversations about the future of OpenStreetMap and about gender diversity inclusion. Trudy, any last thoughts? I think Zanib is back to just the closing sentence from each of you would be great. Yeah, I, I just want to um, see how best the different research can be integrated together. It would be very interesting to see like if all the heads can be put together to come up with one thing. I think that will also be very helpful for the community. Wonderful. Yeah, I do think that there's some similarities for that. And I think we lost Zaneeb again. My kingdom for solid internet for people. Zaneeb, are you there? Just checking one more time so that you can say say thank you and goodbye. Zaneeb, can you hear us? Yeah, thank you for okay. listening this uh, research, but I have I I hope this can be used for everyone, and I hope uh, many women can have more confidence to using OSM mapping and being contributor. Well, you are a leader, and you're showing us how if confidence happens, you can put good research together. So thank you so much, Zaneev, for your work on this, thank and you. we together will make OpenStreetMap uh, uh, diverse and inclusive for everybody. Yeah. Thanks everybody and, and thanks again to our technical team and Zaneeb for staying up so late. I know it's late for you in, in, in Indonesia. And thanks everybody. And again, there'll be another talk. Um, there's more talks all day. And don't forget that there are many talks that happened yesterday. I got up early and watched those talks. And I just want to say thanks again to the tech team for making, us, making it possible for us to have a virtual state of the map. Everybody have a good morning and good afternoon and good evening. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.